Hello everybody, today I'm here with a fun craft that you can do for your craft room or with your kid. This is Kid Safe and it's going to be a yarn art canvas. I'm going to be using white school glue by Super Tight. I like this glue because it is safe for my kids so my kids can get their fingers in it. It's not going to release any nasty toxins. It doesn't cause cancer. It is safe. It goes through rigorous tests, more rigorous than the US Elmer's glue and so I really Really, really like this glue and we are going to basically take and cover this canvas with this yarn how we're gonna do that or how I'm gonna do that is I have some water in my cup right here and I am going to pour my glue into the water like so and I'm going to pour pretty much all of it on in there. If you guys are interested in Super Tight, um, I actually have a coupon code. You can get 10% off if you just use the coupon code provided for you in the description and that affiliated link. It is affiliated. It doesn't cost you any extra, um, but it does help me out. So make sure that you head on over there, use the code, and on any $5 order or more, you do get a 10% percent off discount and you can get that glue this glue right here there all right so I'm going to mix that up before I do though one other thing I like about this glue is if you see that tip it's like a brush tip end on it and so if your kids are are gluing something down they can go over and spread out the um, product you know spread the glue out and not have to get their fingers dirty but what fun is that right well we're gonna be doing this fun little project okay so I need to stir this up just gonna use this end I'm gonna stir this up give it a nice whirl then I'm gonna take my my yarn and I'm going to cut strips because um, I might not you know you don't want to kind of be stuck with a whole bunch of extra down here so I will pull it off in strips as I go along and I'm just gonna saturate it now I am gonna get my fingers dirty and if your kids do this they will get their hands dirty and they will get their hands in this glue so that's why it's super important that you go ahead and uh, use glue that's safe the super tight glue is totally safe so make sure that you use something that's not harmful because you could do this with other types of glue I'm sure uh, I wouldn't want to do it with a white craft glue I don't really know if I trust that to be safe. So that's why I'm using the super tight school glue. Okay. I'm just going to give that a nice mix. It's supposed to be liquidy. It's not supposed to be thick because we want it to have a really nice coverage on this yarn and if you wanted to you could go ahead and also use this on a piece of paper it doesn't have to be a canvas but I'm gonna create a canvas to match my craft room well it's also my um, guest bedroom I do have a day bed in here <laughs> so I'm just gonna Go ahead that's why I'm choosing purple some people what would be fun also is if you um, I don't know if you've seen the multicolor yarn before that would be fun in this as well for a kid or if you want to do something a little bit more um, monotone you could put any color you want on a canvas or a piece of paper or in your journal and then go ahead and after it dries just so it white and that would be really cool. All right, so I'm going to pull out my first string right here. Make sure that you are on a craft mat because this is gonna get messy. 
and I am going to start to lay this out on my canvas. And since it is glue, it will adhere to my canvas, which is pretty stinking cool. And it just creates a really fun texture. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to lay this out and speed up the video so you don't have to watch me do this. And then I will come back after it dries and finish up this canvas with you. Okay, so I am done, and I know that I said I was going to let it dry and leave it like that, and I also know I was saying that I was going to wrap the whole thing, and as I started to wrap, I didn't really like the look for what I was going for, so I decided just to do kind of a hodgepodge yarn. Now, when this dries, I actually think I am going to black gesso it and then dry brush it with a couple different colors to make it look like a night sky because my quote is dream and I have a sweet little Rita Bear cat fairy on the moon. So I wanna add that as soon as this dries. I'm gonna let this set up overnight because it is super, super soaked right now as it should be, which is exactly what I wanted and it will adhere to my canvas just fine. But as you can see, it's really messy. This is a great project for kiddos I would say probably around six six to twelve years old I, I can even see my teenagers doing it honestly but um it's it's really fun summer project if you think about it. it's too hot to go outside or whatever do something like this with them and they will have a ball so I'm gonna let it dry and then I'll be back and we'll finish it up and I'm gonna go clean up make sure you use a craft mat <laughs> all right you guys will be right here and I'm gonna go clean up. Hi guys, it is dry and it did take indeed 24 hours cause I super duper soaked it up in that super tight school glue mix and water, but it is on there good. Now, this is absolutely adorable and I was going to put, and I still am going to put her on with the word dream. And that would be really cute, like as it is, but I wanna take it to a next level. So if you're doing this with a child, this yarn activity is great as is. You can even throw on a couple different colors of yarn, let the kid just run wild, construction paper, canvas, poster board, whatever. You could even make it on a smaller scale and do bookmarks back to school for next year. It would be wonderful and this is a lot of fun. So this has some really fun texture on it. And I'm gonna go ahead and just add some more texture to it. And I'm going to kind of steampunk it out a little bit or finibear it out a little bit. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to take some black gesso and I'm just gonna put that off to the side over here. And I'm going to take some Prima Art Stones and I'm going to mix that into my gesso. And what's that gonna do is it's just going to put some pretty little pebbly um, texture down in some areas. I'm not gonna go too overboard with this. <coughs> Excuse me. I just want it to be a little bit, I'm left-handed, sorry. I just want it to be kind of a little bit, just to give it a little extra oomph. So I'm going to get some of this all mixed in here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just dry brush a couple different beautiful Finnebear colors over top. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just start to apply this in some areas. And I really want my texture of my um, yarn to shine through. So I'm not going too crazy 
with the pebbling, the little art stones. Just want it, I just want a little bit, just to give it a little extra oomph. And then once I get these laid out, I'm gonna go ahead and just really get this nice and good covered over with the black. Okay, so I might do a little bit more because I did it towards the center and I should have done it around the edge. I didn't realize that until the end. Oh, well. Okay. And it's easy if you just kind of make a hole in the center there for it all to kind of go. These are so much fun. If you ever are doing this technique and you have spots that are plain with no texture, just do this. Just mix some of these little art stones into your gesso and then just gesso up those spots with them and it'll fill it in and give it some texture so that when you go through it a dry brush you're totally good to go so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of do this on the edges and whatnot and then I'm gonna gesso it All right, so I am going to fast forward this section of me doing this. And once I get this all up, I'm gonna go ahead and lay out some more black gesso and cover up all the canvas and all the beautiful purple. So it's all going to be black. And this is one of those projects where it gets worse before it gets better. All right, I'm gonna start fast forwarding See you when it is done. Okay. So this looks like it's got a pretty good coverage on it and I'm going to have to let it dry before we can go on to the next step. So that's going to take a little bit to set up, but we will be back to finish this off. So this has had some time to dry. I did take a heat gun to it as well and blasted it and then I let it rest and then I blasted it so on. But in order for this to fully cure, so to speak, I would give it 24 hours, 12 hours if you're in a dry environment like I am, but I can go ahead and finish this off now. I am actually going to be using three of these beautiful paints by Prima. I'm going to be using the um, Metalique Pink Blush, the Metalique Emerald Green, and then I'm going to finish it off with the Antique Brilliance Amethyst Magic. So beautiful pink, a beautiful green, and a beautiful purple. And I am going to be setting her kind of here. So I'm going to do the pinks kind of in this area and then go out from there with the green and the purple. What I want to do, or so I think, I may change my mind all along, you know, you never know, is I take the brush and dip it, barely dip it. Then I'm going to brush off that excess as much as I can on my craft mat. I want this brush fairly dry. And then I'm just going to take it and lightly run it over my project. And what this does is it allows for the texture to shine through. And you can always add more color, but you can't take it away. So it's better to go in with a bit of a lighter hand than it is to go in with a heavier hand. Because I can always go back through like I am right now and just adding some more to it. And I'm just kind of thinking about where that girl's gonna go and placement of that and so on. 
Okay, so that's about all the pink that I want to use. So I'm going to move on to my gorgeous metallic emerald green. Again, these are all by Prima. I love their um, Finnevere line. And this is Art. Oh gosh, what's the name of this line? Um, Art Alchemy? Alchemy? I don't know how to say it. All right, again, same technique here. Just really get as much of that off as you can. Oh, I still have a lot on there. Okay, and then I'm going to go kind of down through here and push it into that beautiful pink. Just a very, very light hand. Don't want to be too heavy handed on this. We're just bringing out that gorgeous texture. It's all we're doing. This would be really pretty with the silver too. I have done this and done it entirely white and then gone back through with this. And I didn't, for me personally, I prefer the black. I just think it looks so much more um, regal and, and artistic. But that's just my personal preference that may not be what everyone shares. Okay, and then I wanna hit it again with some pink. So now I'm just kinda of going in and just hitting it in spots. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and rinse my brushes and then I'm going to heat set this just a little bit so that I can add on my last purple amethyst magic in this beautiful wax. Okay, so I'm going to take this wax. I've never used it before, but what it says is it's a unique, gorgeous beeswax base paste with a different with a difference, offering you two wonderful effects in one product. Antique Brilliance Wax has a special opaque yet permanent finish. It will give you give you generous color and shiny results on dark surfaces and antiqued vintage effect with a touch of. Um, iridescent on lighter backgrounds. All right, let's open it up and see what it is. It smells really good. So I'm assuming that I, I just want to take a little bit and let's see. Oh, that's lovely. Oh yes. That's really pretty. So it looks like it formed a little bit of um, a black color uh, when it when I opened it at first a couple months ago. Kind of an ox probably was oxen um, oxidized a little bit. Got some oxygen in there. I think that's pretty normal. It it doesn't seem to be affecting how it goes on. It's it's really. Uh, Quite lovely actually so this is really pretty I'm just gonna continue to throw this down and it smells good too <laughs> I love beeswax smell that smells good it smells oh I don't know I like the smell of it you guys 
Hope there's nothing in it that can hurt me, but I do like the smell of it. So I'm just gonna kinda run this all over. Clean my fingers on it, right? This is pretty. Usually when I do this technique, I, I stick with the copper, or I, if I do a different color, I stick with one color. I rarely will mix it up like this and do several colors, but I kind of wanted to do that this time for something different. Okay, so I think that that is good. I'm going to go ahead and hit this again with a little bit of um, heat so that we can add on our sentiment and get our girl on. Maybe two girls. I pulled out another one too that I like. So check out all of that yummy texture that was created just with yarn that have been soaked in some super tight school glue and gessoed with some little art stones. I mean, that's pretty freaking awesome. And yeah, it's ready to be finished. Just gorgeous. Okay, I did pull in this one too. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to fit her on, but I like her, she's cute. And then I have her. Now the reason why I'm going with this, and, and she she was my inspiration, my muse for this whole project, is because she kind of looks a little bit sad. And so I wanted to do, um, I wanted, you know, this to kind of represent a night sky, maybe a temperamental night sky, like my little sweet girl right here. And I found these beautiful glittery letters in my stash. They are probably 10 years old. I think they're by Kay and Company and I thought they'd be perfect. I'm going to tell you something though. We always run out of the vowels first. Our E's and our A's, usually our E's. So if you have a three, just take your three and flip it backwards and now you have an E. If you have, if you don't have an A anymore, like I didn't, take your V and turn it upside down and now you have an A. If you don't have a W, flip it upside down, and now you have an M. So that's kind of how I do this, and there is, I can actually pull that up a little bit, maybe. Let's see here. Maybe adding her will be too much, we'll see. But I don't mind this one popping off of the, the top of my project. That's okay. So I'm gonna have to adhere these. First I gotta lay them out though. You know, be cute is if I can get her little legs kind of between the E and the A. Oh yeah, I like that. Or, oh, let's see here, I might change it up entirely. I don't know, I'm just, I'm playing right now. So many times I start a craft in my craft room and then I don't end up doing what I had anticipated. I end up mixing it up. Oh, I like that down there. That's a little bit busy. What if I have her laying on top of the word? Then I can pull these definitely onto. Yes, I think I actually like that better than my sweet little moon girl. Mm. 
You're adorable. That's okay. She provided a wonderful muse, right? I mean, I created this beautiful canvas because of her. So she, she did her job, but I'm going to store her for a little bit longer and maybe she'll provide me some more inspiration. Okay, so to adhere this, I'm just going to be using the all-purpose universal glue, super tight again, and um, I'm going to first do my title, start off with my M first. A, that was a V, but now we're making it an A. Backwards three, I should say. R. Up. Since this is a canvas, I can go ahead and just oh, but look, she might fit there. Oh, I like that. These are the little Rita Bearcat um, fairy. She comes out with a new set each month. They're limited edition. I believe this was for March 15th through April 15th. She usually comes out with them in the middle of the month. So I have, I really like this set. I've done some fun stuff with it. just on top like a mattress I am getting heavy-handed with the glue because it has to really drop into this into the texture of my canvas so I want to make sure that it has a nice application All right, and I'm gonna call that done. So cute. So as you can see, you can do this project with your kids, super, um, super simple with just the yarn and the canvas and just let them go at it. And then if you want to take it to the next level, go ahead and just do what I did and just sew it and um, have some fun because this creates a really fabulous background. This would also be a fun background to black uh, gesso 
and then either do a gold or a copper steampunk color dry brush over the top for um, uh, Halloween. So there's lots of possibilities with this. This is a you know the night sky for for my craft room, which is also my guest bedroom. But so much fun with this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please, please, please share it. Tag it on Pinterest. Um, you know, that's awesome. I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and do so. And I will catch you guys later. Bye.